Yeah, welcome back from that background report on World Humanitarian Day. And to talk deeper on this, I have a humanitarian here in the studio with me in person of Mr. John Olubemi. He is a director of uh, communications. Uh, he's the director of communications, Shamsi Unusual Heart Foundation. You're welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you very much, madam. It's nice being here with you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. So, um, sir, what does it mean to be a humanitarian? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, being a humanitarian is, for me, I see it as a religion. It goes beyond, um, you know, just calling yourself a humanitarian. I see you being a humanitarian as someone that has a deep passion for people, that have a love for people, that have a love for people that are suffering, people that are passing through so much, people that are oppressed. Um, you want to see them get out of their oppression. You want to put smiles on their faces. You want to see their condition of living get better. You want to see them get better at what they do. You want to relieve them of their pain and suffering. Mm. For me, I feel it's just beyond calling yourself a humanitarian. If you've not been able to meet some of these basic criteria that I've said, if you cannot put your smiles on the faces of people, um, you're not a humanitarian. But when you're able to do that, you see someone suffering, someone passing through pain, and mm. you have that desire to relieve them of their pain and put smiles on their faces, you're a humanitarian. And I'm already smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this year's theme is um, It Takes a Village. Oh. Uh, you have empowered the less privileged from rural communities. Mm. So what does it feel to put smiles to those people in that section? Oh, thank you so much. Um, this year's theme, as you've just mentioned, It Takes a Village. The World Humanitarian Day is a day that has been set aside by the United Nations to reach out to people that are you know, passing through so much pain as a result of war, poverty, famine. Mm. And it's a day that's usually commemorated on the 19th of, um, you know, August. The 19th of August, it's a day, you know, just to commemorate and to, you know, put smiles on the faces of people. You know, for us at the Shamis Unusual Heart Foundation, our organization is that which is focused on prisons. It's a prison NGO. Mm. And our basic um, focus is to reach out to inmates many of whom have been um, incarcerated due to no fault of theirs. Some people are in the four walls of prison, you know, without knowing the offense that they committed. And some people have spent years in prison all because um, they are unable to raise as little as 5,000 naira, 10,000 naira. They are behind bars. So basically what we've been doing, uh, the foundation was, you know, created or established due to the um, passion, you know, uh, our founder have for, for such people because she had a personal experience or where she had the brother of hers thrown behind bars for an offense he never committed. So it was true that we realized that there are a lot of people like him that mm -hmm. are behind bars for an offense they did not commit. And then we, we started in 2019. We've been to several correctional centers across the country. Mm -hmm. And we've met people who have also shared their stories, people that have stayed in the prison for as much as two years, three years, or because they couldn't raise 5,000 naira, 10,000 naira as fines. So what we usually do is to go there, when, uh, we look at some of those lesser crimes, mm -hmm. um, offenses, we go there, we rehabilitate them, we give them skills, and okay. um, we pay those fines, 5,000 naira times 20, as the case may be, 10,000 naira times 10, 10,000 naira times as 30, little as, that. as little as that. And then before we put them out into the society, we give them basic skills, and then we put them out. But recently, we've started looking at, you know, uh, our, 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 our modus operandi, how we function. We've come to realize that in as much as we are bringing out these people, more of them are going behind bars because uh, most oh. of them find it very difficult to start life um, in uh, the outside prison, outside of, of the prison walls. In the prison, they are fed as much as three times a day, twice a day. They cook and for themselves. And there. they can't get it out there. Oh. So we now realize, why don't we empower young people, you know, young boys and girls on the street? Why don't you empower them with skills so that when they are now earn money for themselves, oh. crime will not be attractive to them? A lot of people get into crime because some of the people we bring out into crime, some of them, as little as going to steal food, they're going to steal, you know, something to eat. We say, no, if you have, if you can empower these people with skills, mm. definitely they will be able to work, earn money for themselves, and there will be a ripple effect in the society. So we recently embarked on that with the empowering of um, training and empowering of 20 young people in skills ranging from pastry making um, soap making, liquid soap making, and then barbing. And we held our first, um, you know, empowerment events uh, barely a few days ago. And the smiles on the faces of those people is something that you cannot buy with money. 
you know, you see them sharing their testimonies. In fact, recently we had some of them, especially those that we trained in Babin, in as much as they are still apprentices in their various places of oh. training. You see them wearing the apron, using the, the oh. clipper, you know, you know, trying to learn, trying to get better. Those that we've trained in pastry making, we also gave them starter packs. Okay. You know, those that we've trained in pastry making, we gave them something as little as what they can just use to start from inside their house. Nice. Do you have a stove? Do you have a small gas? Mm. We gave them something um, that they can use to make at least fifteen to 20,000 worth of products. So that when they make it, they quickly go out, they sell, they buy those raw materials, they come back home. It's a it's a cycle. Yeah, there's a turnover. Yeah, there's a turnover. There's wow. a turnover that really. And over a period of time we are you, I'm yeah. sure prisons yeah. is not something that a lot of people will think about. Mm -hmm. So looking at the twenty twenty three World Humanitarian Day yeah. brings people from across the the humanitarian system together yeah. and work collectively, mm -hmm. as you've just mentioned. Yes. So and that's for survival. Yes. yes. Uh, well-being. Yes. Their own dignity. Yes. So how you know how does uh, does this come across to you? Yes, it's it's it struck me in the sense that that, that phrase you mentioned, dignity. There's something with with you know someone that's passing through pain, someone that is oppressed, someone that is not. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing as substantial as a human dignity. When someone is in a war torn environment, when someone cannot fend for himself, when someone cannot take care of some of his basic needs, you know, a lot of thoughts are coming through their mind, you know. So basically what we're looking at is once some of these things can be restored, the world definitely will be a better place. You see people that can do much more because they've been empowered, they've been helped. A man that you put smile on his face today or a woman that you put smiles on her face today we want to do the same to somebody that is feeling such pain. Okay. Such people will not forget where they are coming from. We see a lot of them, especially in our organization. You see a lot of them, you know, come and share their testimony. Usually we have an annual event where we even have some of the ex-inmates come to address mm -hmm. people. They say, mm, this is not the end of the life for you. You are in this particular circumstance does not mean you cannot be like me. I may not look it now, but once upon a time, I was yeah, like you, yeah. you know. So for us, it's a day that we hold dear to us and want to see more of some of these activities um, going out to commemorate a day like the World Humanitarian Day. Okay. So what's the message to Nigerians evolving to humanitarian spirits? Mm -hmm. You know, um, the message to Nigeria, to my fellow Nigerians is this. Wherever you find yourself, try as much as you can to put a smile on someone's face. You may feel um, those people, they are none of my business. But the truth is, I, I often tell you know, my colleagues that we live in a very complex society where you may not have money in your pocket, but so long as you drive a car, somebody somewhere is seeing you as a big person. So the moment a riot happens, you are the, you are the target. Why? Yeah. Well, because they see you as some of their oppressors. Mm -hmm. But if you are able to empower that person, he has a business in that society, he has a small kiosk where he's barbing, he will not want to put fire into another person's oh. kiosk because he knows his own will be at risk. So for us, it's a, a day to remind ourselves, not just to be our brother's keeper, but to put smiles on the faces of people, to make as much impact as we can, and then we're going to have a better world eventually. We will definitely have a better one. Yes, Thank sir. you so much, John, for coming on the program. So and much, I've been smiling, you know. <laughs> just I just feel happy because there's somebody doing something beautiful out there. Thank, Thank you sir. for coming on the program. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, I've been smiling throughout. And um, putting a smile on somebody just takes as little as, you know, it doesn't take much for us to do, you know, to do something very little to someone out there. So let's be our brother's keeper. And I've been speaking with Mr. John Olubemi. He is the director of communication, Shamsi Unusual Heart Foundation. We're going to short break. We'll be right back.